Great, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. And I can see we have about 485 people logged in today, which is pretty good wow. number. It's a long phase. And uh, so before we move any further, this is the expert summit. We have started this about uh, four weeks back. We've been getting very great response. We are able to get managing directors of biggest of auto companies, just such as yours, to come on the panel and we discuss what we do ahead. So quickly, a lot of people who are attending, they know it. It'll be a 45 minute session. We'll have some questions from the people which we'll ask you, you know, we will, my team is curating the questions. Uh, we'll run two interesting polls for you to get some data of about what people are thinking. Before we move any further, so let me introduce uh, uh, the panelists with us. We have, just to get my name correct, we have Mr. Stephen Knapp, Director at Volkswagen Passenger Cars India. And we have Dr. Partha Dutta. He is uh, President and Managing Director at Fiat Chrysler India. You can say it's Jeep India. So since he's wearing a Jeep India. And uh, gentlemen, thank you for your time. And let me start my first question. Let me start with uh, Stephen first. Stephen, how has been your experience with the Indian car market? You know, you have been as compared to European car markets, because when you look at, uh, uh, I mean, when people, what influences the car buying divisions in India vis-a-vis Europe? Um, I think perhaps I can start with the commonalities. I think uh, as well, Indian as European people are sharing the love for, for our cars. I think they all love to drive. They enjoy the convenience of individual mobility very much. Clearly, um, when it comes to differences, I think India is clearly much more value driven. Um, you are, um, as Indians, I think much more clever in the way how you negotiate. You are looking for much more out of your rupee um, what you get. So when it comes to, let's say, car specifics, I think, um, let's say, uh, Indian customers tend to um, look in particular for a lot of features. Uh, a lot of features which are also to a certain way shiny. Yeah, so you need to visible change, um, but the market is driven by much more news. So you need to change uh, on a much higher frequency your vehicles than it's uh, normal in, in Europe or in the US or, or around the world. So that is, is clearly, um, uh, but in principle, what we see, for instance, uh, we have a higher degree of loyalty in particular in the workshop. Yeah, So that's more fragmented in Europe. So there is, um, situation is different here in India. Uh, people really tend to stick to your um, dealership, uh, which I think is a good base. So, uh, in principle, I think love to a, to a car is, is is a common factor all around uh, the world. Great. Uh, Partha, you have spent considerable time in India, uh, sorry, in USA and China, right? And China is a very fascinating, of course, we know it's a very big uh, automobile market. Tell us some comparisons, because as compared to uh, people buying in, in China, India, US, what, what do you think? I think, uh, as Stefan said, I, the common thread is, you know, passion for owning a piece that, you know, shows your prestige, you know, enhances your prestige. I think car buying is still an emotional uh, purchase no matter where you go. But Stefan is correct that in probably anywhere else in the world, uh, the place where you have the most value-oriented customers, people who are very, very particular about what is the value that they're getting for what they pay for is probably in this market. As far as the comparisons between China and India, I think the segments and the requirements are just, uh, there's a phase lag. I believe that the Chinese market, you know, likes a little bigger uh, product and India is getting there. I think it has to do primarily with the, you know, uh, disposable income and the per capita income that is the difference between the two countries i think that's the primary difference otherwise chinese people are also value oriented you know they're looking for and one big thing that i see as a similarity between the two markets is this need for um, uh, gadgets and the glitzy things the shiny things yeah. you know between the two markets that's very similar between the chinese and the Indian market. so uh, Stephen, you you have ever had a stint in china have you no, no, I, I, I had a stint in the US, but not China. For Volkswagen, so I'm, 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 China? Uh, for Volkswagen, chi yeah, for Volkswagen, uh, China is the most important market, apart from our home market, uh, Germany, obviously. So um, almost uh, every fourth 
car is sold in, 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 in China. It's a huge market for, for Volkswagen. And that's also why, I mean, you come to the crisis right now, one of our biggest advantages because uh, China seems to come back to normal levels and that's supporting our brand obviously very much. Yeah, so we're very happy about this. Um, we, we, we've been able to grow market share now, um, uh, now a couple of years consecutively, even though we were market leaders in, in China for quite a while. Uh, so China is definitely uh, one of the core market uh, for Volkswagen. Stephen, so uh, Volkswagen is perceived as a very premium brand, in, even in the sub 10, 15 lakh rupee price point. Do you think it's a double edged sword because with premiumness also comes an after sales uh, experience, after sales service, which is also to premium. So do you think that's somewhere an advantage, somewhere also a disadvantage for Volkswagen in there? No, I think it's a big advantage. You know. um, for my opinion, in the future, um, strong brands will be the prerequisite uh, to be successful in the automotive business because the technology, as, we, as far as electrification is concerned, is something, and you see it in China, is a pretty, um, it's much less um, complicated than a combustion engine, for instance. Uh, and um, from their side, the services, the connectivity is going to be key and the, na the strong name of the brand. So we are very fortunate with Volkswagen to have a very good brand image. Uh, in, in the world and in India as well. Um, when it comes to um, maintenance costs, I think um, we've been now relentlessly talking about the fact that we have reduced our total cost of ownership dramatically. Um, we are having a holistic picture on total cost of ownership. So we are not only thinking about the price of the part or the, um, uh, the factual costs, we are also thinking about the 360 view. So you have to take into consideration what is your service level in, in parts? So you have to have the right, right part with the right price at the right time at the right place in, 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 in fast. You have to have a good quality of your people in the workshops in order to make sure that your car is repaired first time right, because then it's also a fact of costs. Yeah? And what I believe is extremely important nowadays, you have to individualize the journey of our customers. Yeah? So depending on what you want from individual mobility, you have to have the chance to pick and choose from certain models. So we are offering a wide range of uh, financial offers with our captive. We are offering a lot of service value packages in various um, uh, years, um, uh, annual annualities. We have a lot um, uh, in terms of our extended warranty. You can get a car up to seven years with an extended warranty. So it's really a 360 view what we took. And uh, what we see is that we kind of got a really um, a lot of traction on this. Uh, after we had standardized our forever care package in January 2019, we are now 30% less uh, expensive when it comes to the factual costs. And I think um, it doesn't mean that you have a premium brand that you have uh, um, high costs and high maintenance. Um, I think this uh, is not the case anymore. Uh, it needs to be absolutely accessible in both levels, be it the vehicle in India for value and be it your total cost of ownership experience. Partha, you just said that you know in China, people are very tech oriented and they like the business. Now, do you think the post COVID environment, you know? augmented reality and technologies will really play a bigger role you know we already see there are cars being launched virtually so do you think more of tech will come in the picture in terms of car buying servicing etc cetera, etc cetera? yes absolutely i think uh, from a retail experience uh, that will be uh, it has already become the new paradigm right where people are going to be more conscious about the fact that they want a contactless experience they want as much of a touch free experience as possible so clearly all of the OEMs, and it's not just us, right? Everybody is focusing on making the customer feel comfortable, making sure that they're not, you know, entering a space that they feel that they have to, you know, make a compromise decision. So our retail strategy we've implemented with Book My Jeep, that is going to continue. And I think it's going to go beyond just the retail experience. I think customers are going to start expecting things in the car that help them also, you know, as features, whether that's you know sanitization features inside the vehicle, you know other better filters, they're just going to be a different expectation. So that is definitely a paradigm, at least in the near term future, that we're going to see as part of the purchase decision. Okay, I like the question. I may add, I may add, I may add Ramesh, to this. I think Pata is absolutely right. What we see from our Chinese experience is that we have three basically three waves coming. Yeah? So the need for sanitization for building back confidence of our customers is really big. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we have to make sure that we relentlessly um, make this journey a safe journey. Yeah? Um, the second, what uh, Pada was saying, definitely right. The online and, uh, space will be getting a major push. 
In the past, it was not that big so far. We saw some exceptions in Scandinavian markets. We have almost sold 15% uh, online, but this will get a major push because people really uh, tend to be uh, staying home. But what I think is also a, a good opportunity for us, if I may talk about opportunities now, is the used car space. Um, why? Because the, the need for individual mobility, we see it in China, is growing tremendously. People do not want to use, if they can, uh, public transportation right now, and they're looking for some options here. And I think the used car space can offer us accessible um, uh, mobility. And that's really, really, um, uh, I think, a complete change also for the Indian business market, where um, used car business was done by some dealer networks, but we, have, we will see a growing pass in this direction coming in the in the couple of months um, even days oh. so uh, you know all your panelists have said that during the lockdown they've been working very hard without selling any car so of course you all have been through this <laughs> i want to ask you how, what has the lockdown brought you any books you read any you know anything that you learned even in course of normal life or you know spiritually in terms of work from home Whatever, please tell us something. You know, it's a lighter question. Yeah, it's a good question. Sorry. If I may, Pata, I start. Yeah, please. Um, I, I, I see. First of all, I, I really appreciate how well technology is working. Yeah, I think this opens us a complete different viewpoint. Yeah, um, we will be really able to do less travel, be much more efficient, um, also to a certain extent, and um, have the possibility as companies to cast costs. I think that is really an, 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 uh, an experience which I at least can say it's, it's working phenomenally well. Um, you can, can uh, uh, you're focusing much more on a presentation of a, of a team member than you did before because you're simply not distracted from anything else. You just focus on the presentation and the presenter themselves have more chances uh, to really speak and present. So th this way of working, I think, is, uh, is good to see that it's working. I think we will have much more work from home, in particular in cities like Mumbai, where we have such long travel times and we are so inefficient uh, in, 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 why? because we try to use so much time for travel. When it comes to my personal experience, um, I, I still have to, to adjust to it. Uh, I have to say um, it, it, it feels like being in a great tunnel a little bit because in a lot of times you're just talking to a flat screen and you don't see the people. And um, I, I really appreciate being together with people. For me, that gives an inspiration to me and that I'm absolutely missing. Privately, I took the time, I have the chance now to see my family much more because I'm not traveling. I just walk upstairs and I see them. I have now suddenly breakfast, uh, lunches and dinner with them which I never had in the past. Um, I, I see what they do on their virtual learning classes. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how, how, um, yeah, how clever and, and, and independent my children are. I, I never saw. Um, so that is really nice to see. And then you, like you said, um, uh, you have the time to read some books. Um, I can recommend you one um, uh, if you want. It's a, a really a nice book from Robin Sharma called The 5 a.m. Club. Um, uh, he's talking about installing a new um, routine uh, of getting up at five o'clock and taking some time for yourself, making exercise, working on a plan and, and do some sort of some form of meditation. I think that is um, it's a pretty interesting book. So you have time for that also because you just don't need to travel so long anymore. Yeah, so for me, it's been an interesting experience. I think um, we learned a lot. I um, also can say that I, I, I really, um, I'm amazed about my team. I am amazed about the Indian uh, stress resistance. I can really say that Europeans are completely different from Indian. Indians are really used to difficult situation and that makes them strong. It's a, it's a really a, an absolute asset of this uh, country. Um, the, the, the level of engagement I saw in the last two months is just amazing. They are really not in, a in an easy situation. They are much less space, um, let's say, uh, available for, for these people. So it's, it's really, it's been interesting, a lot of to learn, um, but I have to say also, and honestly, I would love to do these panels in person to have a, a, a little um, a chat uh, and to see um, you more uh, closer the, rather than in these kind of platforms. So, just to add to Stephen, I read the book 5AM Club. My only uh, problem is that it's 5 a.m. club, it's a 10 p.m. club. <laughs> 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 the yeah. for, for me, I think the part of the thing that's really come crystallized more is really how symbiotic you know things really are. I think you know a lot of times we get so busy in our everyday life, in our everyday things that we forget 
that there is such a symbiosis between what you do and how it affects somebody else, whether that's, you know, ecologically, whether that's even, you know, traveling on the bus, whether that's you know, traveling in public transportation and how one industry affects the other. I think that symbiosis really crystallized. And some of the things that we all thought were holy cows, so to speak, monuments, right, that were we can't do away with, that became very, very um, challenged, right? For instance, I would never have imagined that a whole country could go into a lockdown, just flat out close everything down for two months. There's no way I could have imagined that, but here we are, right? Uh, personally, from a habit standpoint, I've uh, learned to just, you know, roll with the punches. I have meetings. Uh, I understand exactly what Stefan is saying. There is something about that human contact and human touch and personal touch and interaction. I miss that. But nevertheless, I've gotten into a little bit of a groove of having the meetings. You know, there's a rhythm that you've developed. Initially, it was difficult. Now, I think it's about the same. I do have a little workout routine every evening. I go play some uh, individual cricket, if you can believe that. I bounce a ball off a wall and I hit it and I go catch it. <laughs> So, you know, it's an exercise all around, and then I go, <laughs> I'm all in one, right? And then where necessary, since my driver's, you know, lives far away, he, he can't make it here. I cycle my way to the market to get everything I need to. It's just me in the house, so I do everything, you know, myself. Yeah. So it's a new, it's a new rhythm. Sure, sure. So, Stephen, is good resale value important to uh, buyers, especially in India, you think that some good resale value of a car is very, very important when somebody is actually going to buy a new car? Oh, definitely. You touched now a point where I can continue talking for, for a long, long time, but I don't want to take all the way the time. I think uh, resale value is the key of the future. I'm, I'm how deeply convinced um, because we will see a lot of shared mobility in the fence sense also that people are not going to own those. Here in India, we have hardly a no leasing um, landscape or not a big one. But if you go to other countries around the world, you look at the US, uh, for instance, or, or UK, where you have high levels of leasing, the resale value is the key to the success of an automotive company. Um, it is obviously also an effect for a customer of total cost of ownership. You know, you, you buy your car and you do want to have your car in the same value you, you bought it at the time. So, um, this is for me the future element um, uh, and we are relentlessly working on it and the, the fact that we have launched a huge used car offensive now um, in the beginning of the year um, is exactly based on the fact that we had a nice development of our residual values because it, it ties into each other. You cannot go out and push used cars very much if your own brand is not uh, safe and stable in terms of residual value. So that is really, I can only repeat, for me the key of the model of the future, how we are going to uh, use mobility. Because if you get this stable, you're not, you don't have to give a lot of incentives. It is just, it's just a rolling model. Yeah. And um, I, I, we, we are doing everything in the way how we market our cars, in the way how we um, uh, uh, care, take care of our cars in terms of quality. All these elements are paying into one fact, uh, which is the residual value. Partha. Uh, Jeep is known for you know off-roading and all of that, and uh, you have launched a new Rubicon. So, when is the next uh, off-roading tour? I mean, will we see more of that? Whenever you're doing next, I'm signing up for sure. But because <laughs> go you see more of this coming up now. I mean, uh, with the new yes, uh, uh, obviously you know it is a brand that is known for its duality of on-road and off-road. You know, it has a great legendary capability built into it. Um, Yes, we do have a, a big community piece and a Jeep Trails thing that we yeah. have as the umbrella, you know, organization and initiative that sometimes Mr. Manley says the following. He says that Jeep was a social brand before Facebook came along, right? Facebook is the social media today, but before that, Jeep was the social media. So it okay. is true that our brand is a community brand and, you know, folks such as yourself who want that, that experience, that, you know, outside of the concrete jungle experience, we will continue to do that. We have a legendary Jeep trail once a year and we have several Jeep trails that are held along the year, several of which we hold and many of which are actually organically brought up by the consumer base themselves. 
because there's it, it is a very social brand. And to add to what Stefan said about residual value, I think Jeep won the residual value award in 2019, 2018 from, uh, uh, I forget which, I think it was the brand trust report. Uh, it's the key, like Stefan said, I completely agree with him. It is the key element that tells you about the worth of the product, right? Because the customer retains the value of what he has. And it's that peace of mind that that brand, you know, their brands are like lighthouses, right? They're beacons that tell the guy, come this way, you'll be safe. And that's exactly what residual value gives to a customer. So, so I'm going to launch a very interesting poll. And the poll is basically, so we have now, right now about, I think 483 or 84 people live. So the poll will be, should Jeep and Volkswagen bring electric SUVs to India soon? So uh, you will see that on your screen. Can you see that? It's a quick poll. Yep. So this is some insightful uh, for you guys because let's have the participation. And, and everybody who's tuned in, we have the Top Gear issue in the handout section below. Please feel free to download it. And you know, and it'll be, I'll be going through some questions also. And whatever my team has curated, maybe we'll put it up for them. So the poll isn't- Are we progress. supposed to for vote as well, Ramesh? No, no, you cannot vote because this poll is for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to share the results. Let's okay. see if we can see the results. Can you see the results? Yes, I do. Okay. So yes, 53% say get your electric cars to India. 6% say no. 41% very wisely said not before the infrastructure is in place. So, you know. Can you see that? I do, I very, do. It's a, it's a good poll, interesting poll. Yeah. Right? And very yeah, wise so. people, I have to say. I'm, <laughs> I'm nice in life, all, yeah. all of them are very wise. All of them are very wise. Now, uh, moving forward, Stephen, you know, COVID has changed the world. I'm sure you will have all of you all of you have difficulties in selling cars and getting customers to go back to the stores. But what do you think are the buying trends for cars would change? Like, what are the key qualities you think a customer or a buying trend per se would you know specifically change? Any pointers if you think? Yeah, I think we we touched we touched on this topic uh, slightly before already. I think first of all, it will be a lot of online sales, so people. What they do did in the past, they had um, researched everything on internet already. So they are very well informed before they came to the to the um, showrooms. It was such kind of a reinforcement of their decision they already took at home. I think now what we will see is that they will stay at home and we will have more to bring those vehicles to them, uh, bring and drop services in order to test the vehicles in their environment because they don't want to go out and want to go where people are gathering. So this, this confidence lack is there and um, like we discussed before, we have to try to um, bring it down to regain this confidence, but it will definitely uh, um, remain like this in a higher percentage. We have to be clear about this. Walk-ins were anyhow dropping dramatically in the last years, and that trend will um, so go further. I think um, uh, Bata also mentioned the fact that you will have to look at different accessories. That is clear. There might be different requirements now coming into um, our cars, so like um, different filter forms. Like he said, we might have um, factory fixed um, sanitization spaces so that it fits in. So a lot of these elements where people, um, you know, kind of, kind of feel protected uh, in the vehicle. So this we will see. So a different form of demand definitely coming. Yeah. But as a fundamental, I think, um, the let's say the body styles, the way of driving um, the, the, let's say the powertrains and stuff, this we will not see in a different form. This will be the same. It will be only a different way uh, of how buying and kind of a, let's say, specialized uh, offer structure, which we have to give because of the, the situation of COVID-19. Partha, the only thing is the perfect time to get your sub four meter. Now, when do, you, when, when do we expect? A lot of people have asked this question also, actually. Yeah, very, very good question, Ramesh. I can tell you that we're actively investigating the sub four meter. I can't begin to tell you when we'd be bringing it in here. I'll, you know, have to excuse myself from the answer to that question. Don't worry. But I want to add to what Stefan said. Stefan said, um, I think everything that he said about the retail experience is absolutely spot on. It is going to be more digital and it is going to, uh, you know, people are going to be 
looking for that comfort, right? There's going to be innovative solutions to make sure that cash out of pocket is reduced because of the liquidity, you know, issues that we have in the market and people are going to be trying to save cash. So there's going to be innovation in that side. But there's one thing that from a product trend standpoint that I think is going to continue and that is connectivity. I think that's not the retail experience, but on the product side, one of the things that I think was going to is going to become more and more prevalent as a trend is going to be connected. Uh, it'll be just going to continue into where we go. So tell me, both of you gentlemen, it's an open question for both, both of you. How will you increase the online buying experience? Because you know, everybody is going digital, everybody has a beautiful site, but uh, somewhere, you know, some people when they actually go to buy the car, it's a experience where it's a whole of experience when you go to dealership. Any big tactical changes on the online presence that any of you have been doing, please go ahead. I think um, what is the essential of online and will be also in the future the essential of online is the easiness. If I have to click through multiple um, uh, windows and stuff to get my, uh, my, my information and my setup done, I don't believe that this is convenient for the customer. We have to find a simple, simple solution how you can um, uh, do ha have your sales and service uh, um, experience uh, done. So it must be really easy. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Secondly, um, technology all today offers you a, a host full of possibilities of uh, doing um, uh, different forms of experience in terms of virtual experience. You can have a car sitting in a car experience already today as, with, with the Google glasses or with, um, with these kinds of stuff. Um, very, very easy. And, and this we have to give them kind of a playing ground. So people like to play on the internet, they like, like to, um, to really utilize it as a fun element also. So it needs to be fun, it needs to be simple, it needs to be fast. Um, uh, these, these are the elements we have to, to, uh, to address. Yeah? And then uh, there is no, no uh, way around it that this will come even further. Yeah? The one particular element is still in the landscape of India, not an easy thing. This is the financing a bit. Yeah? Because you have a lot of documents which have to be filled, which have to be signed, which are carried around. Um, that is not like in other markets where you can even have a signature on, on, a, on a video yeah? so that you say, yes, I signed this. And then you send the documents over with a digital signature. So what we have basically, for instance, I mentioned it in Sweden, it's a complete process from the trading of the vehicle over to the finances, uh, then a sales process. This is a little bit more difficult here in the legal and, uh, environment in India, but I'm pretty sure also this will change now over time. And from my standpoint, uh, Ramesh, uh, the Book My Jeep is already on, and you know it's a very simple three-stage a three-step process customer goes to the website picks his vehicle he's given his a unique id is created for him and then after uh, he picks the vehicle picks the colors picks the option you know the orders uh, generated and it goes to a dealership sales executive calls the customer and basically walks him through a video any questions that the customer might have vehicle shows up at the doorstep if the customer is looking for a test drive and it's fully sanitized, certified sanitized, certified safe, and you know the customer. So the most important thing, like Stefan said, is peace of mind. Delivering to the customer that peace of mind throughout this experience and the convenience and ease. It's only three steps. It can't be you know a PhD and working through that website. So it's simple, making sure that he's able to get through it, giving him the peace of mind, and we're already doing it. And uh, of course, there, I think in India and frankly, anywhere in the world, being such a big purchase, Ramesh, it's the second biggest purchase in most people's lives. People will still want to do a little bit of a tire kick, right? They're going to want the car. They're going to want to test drive it. That part of the test drive, that's still going to be physical. And that's still going to be something we'd have to make sure that we facilitate for the customer, giving them that peace of mind. So that's going to continue. But all of the other stuff, we're going to have to give him that sanitized because that's the big paradigm shift that we're going to see. And, you know, training those dealers, training the customers, uh, sorry, rather the sales executives, training them on how to do this digitally is also something that we're focusing on a lot more now. Okay, so I'm going to give you, gentlemen, a very, very simple piece of Indian wisdom. Are you guys ready? Yes, now, when we do the online process, Stephen, 
and Potter. We should have a tab called negotiate. So in that, a customer will go and negotiate with the dealer because that's a very important part which is missing right now. You know, all the online sites, you don't get that. Indians are biologically wired to negotiate. Even if you give them free, they'll say, come on, man, take some money and give it to me. <laughs> Now, Good I'm going to advice, I'll take it up with IT. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but, but, but you're right. You're right. This is essential in India. That is really one of the biggest problems. Uh, it might be from our side not too bad, no, because we can stabilize res residual value also with that having one price. Um, but uh, it's not in line with the, with the uh, let's say, the culture huh, of, of India. Uh, so you have to negotiate everything. It's just an amazing yeah. experience. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, how do you see the global you know, SUV wave evolving the post-COVID-19 world? Do you see the demand for compact urban SUV will increase even further? Or do, is there any studies to predict that demand for um, compact on urban SUVs will go up or down? No? I don't believe that the compact SUV or any SUV segment style but as a body style is going to become less popular. I think that is the most popular segment, frankly, I would say around the world. Definitely in India, definitely in China, and uh, certainly also in the US, it's a very popular body style, primarily for its utility and simplicity, right? I don't think that's gonna change. That as a growth pattern, it might you know, follow the market or you know, develop based on what the economy and the macroeconomics you know, dictate, but overall, as a body style, it will continue to be popular. There, different markets are going to have different uh, reasons that people will have buying choices. For instance, in Europe, the compact SUV is going to have a very big greenhouse gas footprint impact. Right? If you go to buy it, there's probably going to be many vehicles that are mild hybrids, plug-in hybrids, battery electrics, because of the stringent greenhouse gas regulations that are already in force in Europe. So you're going to see that sort of a propulsion shift in that market. But in as far as China and India are concerned, even in China, frankly, there's a very big shift towards electrification and the infrastructure is caught up. For us, I think the body style and the popularity of SUVs will continue. Whether the absolute numbers are 100 or 80, that will depend on many other factors. Okay, so time for a poll. It's a very interesting poll again, Gregory. This is, these are something insights for you guys actually. So would you still want to visit the showroom? Yes, we'll go to the showroom. I'm launching the poll right now so you all can see it. The poll is, would you still want to visit the showroom for test drive or have the car come home? I'm sure that you guys, everybody has been debating this question. We'll go to the showroom, prefer triangle at home, not sure yet. So let's see how the answers are and this will suggest how the coming time is going to be. Okay, so we close the poll now and I'm going to share the results. Can you see the results? Oh yeah, very clear. Very interesting. Prefer trying it at home. So you guys are spot on with all your you know, test drive home and online initiatives. You're not sure yet, of course, you have completely understand. We still go to the showroom, so everybody's happy, you know? So everything goes. Showroom has a role to play, online has a role to play, and people out there who are there, some of them are actually in the market to buy a car, some of them are your customers, some of them are your dealers, so we have a whole lot of them, but a very, very enthusiastic talk. So I think it's a very good uh, case study that we're getting these inferences. Now, we don't have much time, I'm going to ask a couple of more questions. Uh, Stephen, we are having the five seat to go out and come back. You can correct it if it's a rumor or it's a fact, but uh, how's the customer's reaction to the all space as compared to the five seat one? Especially, it's a it's, you know, there's no diesel now. So the question is, is the five seater Tigua make a comeback? If you don't want to answer because Partha is there, I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the Partha is damn scared of our five seater Tiguan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, perhaps uh, as you asked me an SUV question, I, I might uh, add some some what Pater said. I think he's is def definitely right with this. SUV will be and is the future. Um, I can only speak in Pater's case. It's logical that he's selling 100% uh, SUVs, 
uh, whereas we are already as a brand Volkswagen in the world are selling more than 50% SUVs. Yeah. So that, that is uh, clearly uh, the trend and we have decided the same as you know, we are launching four new SUVs into India. Um, we had already two now launches, Allspace and T-Walk. Um, it's just a simple um, body style, which is interesting, higher seat uh, um, position, higher ground clearance. Uh, and then a rugged design is perfectly fit for India from my point of view. Um, and it will be in the future because also the battery solutions are all take, having ba basically as an ingredient a higher seating position. So we will see might be a trend versus CUV also in some areas in the world, so some cross utility vehicles. But I think in the next five years, SUV in India will be definitely the one. Coming to your question on Tiguan All Space, um, it's been a good, very good uh, reception. Um, all cars, both cars on T Rock actually, uh, we are sold out basically. Uh, that um, worked very well. Uh, the T1 All Space, we have also um, sold quite a few cars now already. So the reception is very, very nice, and uh, my, the vehicles are stunning vehicles, and it's not a big surprise to us that it's a success. Um, so uh, on your Tiguan five-seater um, question, as you know worldwide, Tiguan five-seater is a is a clear um, uh, uh, error, let's say part of our lineup. We just announced it's the best-selling vehicle from Volkswagen. Um, so we sold uh, I think six million cars worldwide. Um, so it's 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 an it's a part of our um, uh, lineup and and obviously also an interesting part in India. Uh, so. Um, for us, uh, really, the future and can only use, um, support this is in SUVs. And like Partha said, it depends on, at the end of the day, the budget. And we are launching next year the Volkswagen Tygoon, which is a compact SUV, um, which is 93% uh, uh, localized. Therefore, it will be much more accessible than what we have today. We know we have around an excess um, localization of 80%. Uh, and, and that is a spot on car for the time what we have now. People will have less budget. They're going for a smaller cars or a used car, like said. And uh, I think uh, the SUV category is the category for India. I, I wouldn't see any other country apart from some countries, perhaps in Africa, also in South America, where SUV is so, so dominant uh, a nice solution for the customers. You know, the road conditions simply um, support that very much. So. Pata, you've so spent we're, quite we're not, you're not transforming our um, brand Volkswagen into Jeep, Pata, don't you worry. Um, uh, well, but uh, we want to take a little bit away from your customers. That's pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, we're happy with the competition. You know, we, yes. we tell everybody, bring it. <laughs> That's the whole objective of this panel because we have competing brands and talking completely at ease. So everybody who's watching is always be getting up the most. Now, Partha, you spent a lot of time in engineering yourself, you know, in a, in a vehicle development. How much of a challenge is it to engineer a global product? Uh, it is a huge challenge to engineer a global car, huge. It is a very big task. It's a fun task, but it's a challenge because of the uh, diversity of the requirements that are between all of the markets, right? So if I were to build a vehicle, the most important thing that I want to do is to make sure that I keep the development costs as low as possible. Because otherwise, you know, it's impossible to pay it back with the because it's an economy of scale. So to keep the development costs manageable, having the right strategy to be able to develop it once and not have redundant development is one of the most important pieces to do it globally. So if you were to develop a vehicle that had a different regulatory emission norm in China versus Europe versus the US, yeah. and that doesn't have to be just emissions. It could be safety emissions. It could be a whole host of, it could be, it could be just flammability of materials. So having all of that and making sure that those requirements, you know, dovetail really well, do it once, do it right, is what is the big challenge. And that is, frankly, a very interesting problem and a very interesting puzzle to solve. Nice. <laughs> uh, okay, so this question is not part of the plan, but a lot of people have asked this question. It's a very interesting question. It's a very fun question. Given money is not a problem, and uh, which car would you buy, Stephen? And which car would you buy, Papa? Dream car, a car where money is not a problem. Pick up a car from competition, could be anything. Well, it let's definitely go first. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of cars I would buy, to be honest. Um, uh, but 
for me, um, really a spectacular experience is the Golf R. Um, the compact format, the, the, the driving ability of this vehicle, and what I also love, the understatement of that vehicle. That is something which I would definitely go for. Okay. Um, so, Mesh, I, I will give you an honest answer. And one of the reasons why uh, I would say that it was in the late 90s, early 2000s that I really fell in love with, uh, you know, being off the road. And that is usually when you drive a vehicle, Mesh, and you look, you see a picturesque scenery, a byway. You look at it, you may take a picture, right? But there's very few cars that afford you the lifestyle to go there. And that's what, what and that has in it an element of a, um, you know, a challenge, an adventure. And so for me, it's the two door Wrangler that I would get as my favorite car. As expected, gentlemen have given the safest answers from the brands. I was expecting so Ramesh, maybe Ramesh, you would buy Ramesh, it. Wonder you would buy Ramesh, it. Well, yeah, Ramesh, what is your choice? Tell us. It must be a goal. I will, <laughs> <laughs> I will not answer this question because I will, <laughs> now I can imagine. So, Partha, uh, last two questions for both of you. Fiat is a very emotional brand. You know, many enthusiasts in India. Can we expect Fiat cars to come back to India? So I will answer this by telling you that Fiat continues to be a brand in the FCA portfolio and is not exiting the market, okay? We have a huge base of very, very uh, big aficionados. We have a base of people who are absolutely in love with the brand and I'm one of them. We think it's a fantastic brand. It's a great history in India. Today, the demand, like Stefan and I said before, is SUV. That's what the demand is today. That's where the market is. That's what our customers would want. And here we are with the preeminent SUV brand in the world. And that's, that's what the we're main economy. On, right? So if the time is right, when the time is right, if there is a product that we would want to bring in under the auspicious of the Fiat brand, absolutely we'll consider it. For the time being, we're focusing on Z. Great. Final question, uh, Stephen. When do you think uh, sales will start picking up? Do you have a date and time, anything in mind? You know, the COVID scenario is, we all know we have to learn to look at it, but do you think that maybe July we'll start seeing people really going into the stores and buying stars? Well, it's always uh, the question what you take as a base point no, in your question. Um, we, we just launched our TSI campaign on our new engine, the 1.0 liter TSI with the six speed manual transmission. Um, on our Polo and Vento, yeah? and we see nice traction already. Yeah, So there is leads coming in, there's customers coming in. Um, we have, uh, in particular, on the online uh, platform, a really nice movement with this campaign kickstarting. Clearly, it's not at pre-crisis levels. I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you some stories, but it's really, it's picking up and it's daily growing as our showrooms daily are opening. So we have uh, now around 35 um, um, showrooms open and around 60 workshops. Um, it's it's getting some traction slowly. The first is uh, sanitizing the premises, and then people are getting back. If you ask me now, what, um, in comparison to last year's level, I believe that we will see um, uh, much much better sales results in Diwali time. It will take some more time here in comparison to other countries. In China, we had a V-shaped curve, so it was a crash down very steep, but it, they came up very very fast. So we, as a brand Volkswagen, we are selling at pre-crisis levels already in China. Um, here in India, as it was a complete lockdown and the complete supply chains were broken, it will take us a little bit more, more time to get back. But I think we will see um, in Diwali uh, um, sales much more coming back um, uh, than, than we think. So let's be positive. It's also our duty. It's the duty of Bart and myself to make nice offers to our customers, to bring value to them, to make them interest, to keep them interested in our mobility. It's the base of the government, which they did. They did good decisions. To make it a positive climate from my point of view um, and we have to just fix it again come back and then we will see and uh, numbers are coming back india has an in and uh, strength in it which um which is really from my point of view making it um, absolutely a, a future market a very very strong um, educational system with very strong people uh, in the market there is demand up there and the economy will come back and then we will see also the sales uh, starting again. Absolutely spot on, Stephen. That's the positive note. 
we all are here we all love cars we all are we are on the same business we all biologically wired to drive a car and the times are much better here because in the lockdown a lot of people have uh, faced a you know need for a car and you know need for the third space and um, and i'm 100% sure that things will come back we will not stop buying cars we will not stop reviewing cars and thank you gentlemen thank you so much for your time and everybody who's watched this for thank you for your input and uh, have a great weekend ahead and hopefully from next week we'll come back to work every hour yes thank you so much have a good weekend guys thank, thank you guys you, bye 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 bye, bye.